Number one gives us statistics for the high temperatures in a city during October, and each of these statistics are given to us in Fahrenheit. So we see the mean, median, standard deviation, and interquartile range. Then it tells us to recall that the temperature C, which is Celsius, is related to the Fahrenheit temperature by this equation, where we get the Celsius measure by taking 5 ninths times the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. So in this first part A, it says describe how the value of each statistic, so each of these changes when we subtract 32 from each of the original Fahrenheit temperatures. So when we subtract a value or add a value to everything, so add a number to all of our data values, we know that that impacts the mean and median the same. So it's going to, the mean and median are going to go down 32 in this case, since we're subtracting 32 from each data point. Then when we add and subtract, that just kind of moves these numbers up and down the number line. 32, so in this case, down. So everything is going to move down 32. So it's just going to shift everything. So our variability isn't going to change. So the standard deviation and the IQR will not be impacted or will not change. If we kind of think about it, and I'm going to draw this out just so we can have something to look at here. But so if we kind of think of this number line, and then we've got some data points here. So let me just put one at one, and let me just put one at, let me go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I go like one and three, so if we think of data points here, then if we just wanted to, you know, add or subtract a number here to each of these, so if we just move each of these up by three, right? It's just moving them up. So then this one will be at four and this one will be at six, but they're still the same width apart. We just moved them up. Okay. So that's going to be part A. Then part B says, describe how the value of each statistic will further change now when we multiply by five ninths. So now this time, all the statistics will be multiplied by five ninths. So adding and subtracting just shifts them but doesn't change the width or the variability. But now when you multiply them, that's gonna actually change the width. So if we think of multiplying this by three, one would be moved up here to three, right? And if we think of multiplying three by three, that's gonna move up to nine. So let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So somewhere up here. And now we can see that this width has gotten wider than what it originally was when we just shifted them. So that's going to stretch out the mean. It's going to stretch out the median. It's going to stretch out the deviation or the width. So all of these statistics are going to be multiplied by that five ninths. Then it says, describe how to find the values of each statistic when the temperature is measured in Celsius. So for the mean and median, you would subtract 32 first, then multiply by 5 ninths. For the standard deviation and the IQR, you would just multiply by 5 ninths since they remain unchanged from the minus 32, so just needing to multiply by the 5 ninths. Number two, here's a box plot. Give an example of another box plot that has a greater median. Okay, so we need the median to be greater. We need a greater measure of variability but the same minimum and the same maximum. So we'll just use this same number line right here. So we need the minimum to stay the same. So we need it to be here at like 15. We need the maximum to stay at 95. 
then we need the median to be greater. So currently the median is at 50. So we want to use a median higher than that, anywhere higher, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put the median here at 65. Then we also want a greater measure of variability, meaning we really want this interquartile range to be wider. So we want this box to be wider. So I'm just going to put, I'll leave maybe Q1 here at 45, but then I'm going to move Q3 up closer to the maximum. And then we can just make our box. So then this is um, greater variability of the data because we made that kind of interquartile range larger. The median is further to the right, so that means it's greater. Our min and our max are at the same spot. Just an example, yours can be different, but just has to follow those three, those couple of um, guidelines. Number three, the mean vitamin C level for 20 dogs was 7.6 milligrams per liter with a standard deviation of 2.1. One of the dog's vitamin C level was not in the normal range. It was 0.9 milligrams per liter, which is really low. So if the value 0.9 is eliminated from the data set, does the mean increase or decrease? So if we remove a small data, okay, so 0.9 is smaller than the 7.6, that means the mean will increase. since a data value smaller than the mean was removed. If the 0.9 is eliminated from the data set, does the standard deviation increase or decrease? So if you think about it, we have kind of a bunch of data over here, right, at like 7.6, and then we have this one way down here at 0.9. So if most of the data is centered over here, and then we eliminate this, now our data is gonna be closer together. So the deviation is gonna decrease. So standard deviation will decrease since there is less variability when 0.9 is removed. Number four, the, de the data set represents the number of hours that 15 students walked during a two-week period. The median is 10 hours. Quartile one is eight. Quartile three is 14. And the interquartile range is six. Are there any outliers? So remember for the outliers, you're going to take um, Q1 and Q3 and if you subtract one and a half times the IQR from Q1 and add one and a half times the IQR to Q3, you'll figure out kind of the, the top and bottom of where the outliers are considered. So what we need to do is do one and a half times. So we need to do 1.5 times the IQR. So one and a half times six which gives us nine. So what we're really wanting to do is take Q1 and add, or sorry, subtract nine, so go down. So subtract nine from the quartile one and take quartile three plus nine. So that nine is the one and a half times the interquartile range. And so in this case, Q1 is eight so eight minus nine is negative one. We don't have any values that are negative one. And number one, we just don't see them in there, but also you couldn't um, walk for negative one hour. So there's no lower outliers. Q3 is 14. So when we do 14 plus nine, we get 23. So anything above 23 is gonna be considered an outlier. So 30 would be an outlier. Number five gives some summary statistics about the number of accounts that follow some bans on social media. So they give us the mean, the median, standard deviation, Q1, Q3, and the interquartile range. 
Part A wants us to give an example of the number of followers that a very popular band might have that would be considered an outlier. So very popular would mean a lot of followers, right? So when we're thinking about this, again, that means that we want to look at 1.5 times the IQR. So if we take one and a half times this, so one and a half times 5,274, that gives us 7,911. So to get a really popular band, we're gonna wanna be looking at the upper quarter of the data. So Q3 plus that 7,911. So Q3 in this case is 19,070. So if we take 19,070 plus 7,911, that means the top number of followers before being considered an outlier is 26,981. So anything bigger than this number. So you could say 27,000, you could say 50,000, you could say 1 million. Okay, anything over 26,981 would be considered an outlier. Then part B says, give an example of a number of followers of a relatively unknown band. So this would mean that they would be on the lower end of the followers. So this is going to be looking at Q1 and then subtracting 7,911. So our quartile one is 13,796. So we'll subtract those. And when you subtract that, you get 5,885. So anything less than that would be considered an outlier. Even 5,884, you could say 5,000, you could say 200. Anything less than 5,885 would be considered an outlier on the low end. Number six, the weights of one population of mountain gorillas have a mean of 203 pounds and a standard deviation of 18. The weights of another population of mountain gorilla have a mean of 180 and a standard deviation of 25. Are the two populate, um, Andre says the two populations are similar. Do you agree? So again, I think you could probably go either way on this, that you could agree with him. And I think you could get some data to back that. And I think you could say, maybe you don't agree. Um, and I think you could have some, some justification for that. So this really depends on how you look at it. So I'm just going to give you one way to look at it. So if we look at I'm just going to kind of put a number line here just a little bit so we can kind of look at these weights. So if I do this and we say, all right, so we've got, let's do 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 230. Okay. So if we kind of look at this and let's do this gorilla in purple. So we're at 203 as kind of like the typical. And if we add 18 to 203, 18, so 203 plus 18 gives us a high end of 221. So that's going to be about here. So here's kind of our high end of that population. And if we take and do 203 minus 18, then we're going to be at 185. So this was 200, 190, 180. Okay, so they're going to be about here. So this is kind of that first gorilla population's weights are kind of in that range, right? And maybe I could move that up onto the number line. So that's where that first gorilla is at. Um, then if we look at the second set of gorilla population, that one's going to be, um, the median is at 180. So this was 190. So here's 180 right here. And if we add 25 to that, okay, so 180 um, plus 25 is going to put us at 205. So the high end of these gorillas are at 205. So about here. And then if we subtract 25, 
we'll be at 155. So if we subdue the other side of this, so kind of those gorillas are, are between there, right? So kind of here's the two populations if you want to look at them and their overlap. So you could say that there's, you know, a good chunk of overlap here. So this kind of chunk overlaps each other. And so I think you could say that you agree because of that overlap. So you could say, I agree with Andre because the gorilla, the gorillas seem to have a decent amount of gorillas that weigh the same. Right, so all of these gorillas in like this green area right here kind of weigh the same. You've got some that are heavier in the purple population, some that are lower in the orange population, but they do have quite a few gorillas whose weights overlap each other. So I think you could say that you agree that way. I think there's also some merit to saying that the second set of gorillas is lighter, right? So you've got a, you know, over half of the, like, there's a lot down here that seem to be lighter. So I think you could say, I disagree with Andre because the second set of gorillas, what did they call the, they just said another population because the second set of gorillas seems to be um, lighter, right? Seems to be lighter or smaller. So there seems to be a lot on the lighter or smaller end. So I think it just kind of depends on how you see the data and how you want to say, do you agree because of the overlap? Do you disagree because it seems like there's quite a few in the second set of population that's smaller? Number seven, the box plot represents the distribution of the amount of change in cents that 50 people were carrying in when surveyed, so change in their pocket. The box plot, this this second one represents where they take out the outlier of 203. So we can see this one is significantly higher, well over one and a half times outside the interquartile range. So if we delete this data point, then it looks like this. So since the median is 25 cents for both plots, you can see here 25 for both plots. After examining the data, the value 203 is removed since it was an error in recording. So somebody wrote it down wrong. Explain why the median remains the same when 203 cents was removed. So when we have 50 data points, right? So if we have all these data points here, the median is going to be the 25th and 26th data point when we have 50. So if both of these numbers right here were 25 cents, when we remove the top one, then the median shifts down one, right? So now it's gonna be this one. So both of these had been 25 cents, the median is gonna be unchanged because it's really not changed significantly by outliers. So let's type that out the median. Okay, so maybe the two values in the middle were both 25 cents. So when the outlier was removed, the median was still 25 cents. Or you could say the median isn't impacted very much with outliers, but so certainly the median doesn't need to change, and in this case it didn't. When the 203 cents is removed from the data set, does the mean remain the same? And that would be no, because the total of the data values, when you add them all up, will be significantly smaller. with 203 removed, so the mean will be smaller as well.